This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 tell us that Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to Scripture, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Thank God. Amen. Spare the Lord's upon me, because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach the deliverance to the captives, recover the sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are brutes. Thank God. The word is neither even in your heart nor in your mouth. There's a word of faith which I preach. You can best with your mouth. The Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast, receiving it on live stream, Boku, YouTube, or wherever. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Paul Peters, my calls. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Everything cool with you? Everything's cool. I think I heard somebody say Bob Moose died in eight. Is that right? Yes. Thank God. Um, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you right now. In the 1970s in Denton, Texas, at a full gospel businessman, Fellowship International, and I was a member there, lived in Argyle. Bob Boos was speaking. He was a prophet. And it's just amazing to me, but there was a minister there. And Bob, being a prophet, they obey God. He said, God said, you're physically and spiritually impoverished. Said that to a preacher. And I thought, boy, this guy's bold. Then he looked at me. He said, God has told me that you have a great determination. And he's going to use that determination for his purposes. I thought, well, you're right. I do have a determination, but I'm not sure this is God. Unbeliever. Booth said, I didn't see that or determine that, but look at your face. Only you have a strong face. I thought, that's good. Amen. Well, it turns out Bob Booth was speaking the words of the Lord. When did he go in eight? 2008. Yeah, okay. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Well, eight was an interesting year for me. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. I want to say one more thing about the 70s, full gospel, Denton, Texas. There was a man 
He was a home builder from Oklahoma City. A guy about my height, might have been slightly taller, but maybe somewhat slimmer built than me. And he was speaking. And he said, come up here to me. And I went up there. And he said, I don't know what it is. But God wants me to tell you. that you're going to be used of him. This guy was honest in appearance. I was pretty good reading what people were. I know that was a prophet in me at that time, still is. But I never forgot that. A very sincere person. I think he's probably was a little older than me. I'm not sure. Amen. But a man that had word from God, I'll tell you that. I had others that said things, but what God. Amen. So um I want to talk about my eyes and my mouth. Then we're going to talk about faithless, perverse generation. Amen. In O A, December or the first six months of O nine. I had a real attack on my eyes. By the last account that we have on video where I was reading with glasses, prior to that, oh four, I could read the Bible without glasses. Got that documented too. Amen. But uh, sometime middle of old nine, I was looking at a full moon one night, and I could see in my left eye a triangular shaped object. Uh, in the moon. And I, I could tell you that I knew it was something in my eye that was being reflected over the moon or perhaps blocked in my eye and I couldn't see that portion of that area of the moon. It looked to be about four o'clock to six thirty and I know something about eyes. I studied them quite a bit in horses, people similar but not the same. Amen. So I never talked much about this. I have shared that I have floating red cells in that eye, and they're to hooked together with my connective tissue. There's six of them, 
and they'll blow here and then over here. And I tried to turn my head and it helped her still over here. <laughs> so I know they're in my eye. Uh, that happened the same time. And I think early on nine. Also, I started seeing bugs scattered, red blood cells on the roads, on the walls, everywhere. I could drive, I didn't, I had to quit driving, right down the road, and I could see these, this spilled red blood cells. Look on the road. Well, I knew it wasn't on the road, and it was in my eye. But it looked like it was on the road. Also, I could see uh, on the walls in here, in my house, the same thing. I knew blood wasn't sprinkled on the walls. That'd be my left eye. Amen. My right eye, I lost sight somewhere four or five. And I couldn't see anything with that. Then one day I started seeing color. I could see, with my right eye, I could see color, all kinds, red, blue, green, orange. I said, well, I'm not colorblind. And then I got to where I could close my left eye do that, I can see my fingers moving. I've done this before. And then I close my right eye. I can see the, the fingers in my left eye. That's where we stand today. I think that I've got a torn retina. That's what I think. I'm considering having someone look at it to confirm it. I'm not sure it's God. But I will tell you, it's going to be fixed. And oh, 89, God told me not to go back to a dentist. I did within a year, 90, a bridge broke the side. Yes, I know you dentists, dental technicians know I got a goofy mouth by the way I sound. And I know it as well. <laughs> so, two or three days ago, well, yeah, I said, Lord, I received my teeth. That's where I'm at. Sunday night, I've been biting the spirit for a long time. Spirit of perversion. A spirit of perversion is something, a spirit that there's no faith to it with it. Paul, would you read this? <clears throat> Matthew 17, verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long, shall, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Faithless and perverse generation. 
uh, Romans 14, 23 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. No, it doesn't. That's Hebrews 11, 6. 14, 23 says, Romans, whatsoever is not faith is sin. Perverse person, one living in sin. Perverse, one living in sin. One not living by faith. Not walking in faith. Interesting. Very interesting. You know, you can doubt. Doubt. Sin is doubt. Sunday night, I was just praying. Really contending with the Spirit. Really. I started saying, I will not bow. I will not bow. I will not bow. I kept it up. I will not bow. All of a sudden, just profuse sweating. I overcame that spirit. Now, Known for years, many years, get the wrestling match with a spirit and start perspiring. You're making some progress. How do you know? Well, read it. Jesus, the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke, in a great contest. Going to the cross. Sweat as though it were great drops of blood. But it wasn't. It was sweat that looked like blood. Great stress. Amen. Thank God. I saw a horse once with a broken shoulder. That horse was in pain like you cannot believe. Amen. I saw him over south of Denton. Back in the 70s. Thank God. I felt so Sorry for that horse. God, he hurt. It gave me some understanding of what Jesus was going through, going to the cross. Thank God. I put the horse down. The fracture was such you couldn't do anything for it. It was his right shoulder. And I didn't want to try to medicate him, let it heal. Because I thought it would not, not be usable. So the People that owned him said, do what you think. I put him down. So, I've seen some things that are very interesting. But I overcame that perverse spirit Sunday night. And all the contention with that spirit left. 
Amazing. Yesterday, I was told that a copper had posted something on Facebook, I guess, right? Right. Right. I know Donnie. Known him for years. He's a principled man. But he posted it out of the word alms out of Acts 10. And I've been teaching the Word of God since 1974, anointed by God. When I was at Jerusalem, I took over the garden. Amen. And I've been around religion all my life. And I knew alms was always money. Always. Every religious organization that I've ever been encountered with tell you alms is money. I never relied on one concordance, one dictionary, one source of anything. I knew a little about Greek and a little about Latin. I didn't speak either, but I could take Greek with prefixes, suffixes, and I could pronounce a word. I could tell you what it said. I used it frequently in veterinary medicine. Thank God, frequently. Amen. So, I could look at a concordance. It's pretty hard to deceive me. Greek, not Hebrew. Although, I could make sense with Hebrew. Can't read it. If I've got a concordance, three or four of them. When the new international version of the Bible came out, I think it was, I'm not sure when. Well, the first one I saw was the 70s. And was I happy to have it? Because people come down hard on the King James, the pseudo-intellectuals. And the NIV has some things that I don't think is right because of my experience walking in the Spirit. doing the will of God from the heart. Thank God. <clears throat> but the NIV got some things clear as a bell. And I think alms is one of them. I think if you read Luke What is it? Sell what you have? Luke 12. Luke 12. Yeah, read that. Luke 12, verse 33. This is in King James. Right. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, 
where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. Sam. I don't know what Young's uses or says. I even recommend Young's over Strong's. Most cases, Young is simpler, and you don't have to run through a bunch of synonyms. But in this case, Young didn't say enough. What did they say? For that verse it says, sell your goods and give alms in the Youngs. Oh, is that right? And it's, it's in Acts chapter 10 where it says the, the kind Acts. That, that's not, what is that, Young's? What Young? Young's literal translation? Yeah. Literal translation. But the other Young, I forgot, the concordance doesn't say that, I don't think. And I think that's what Donnie Cawthorn looked at. But the literal translation says sell, huh? Right. Sell goods. Sell your goods. And give alms. Well, thank God. Well, I knew Donnie had been pushed and deceived. I've been pushed and deceived. Satan deceived the whole world. In 15, you better know a spirit push me to go on short wave on World Harvest Television or radio instead of television. And I made a big mistake. Everybody's heard about it. And believe me, God corrected me. Amen. Well, he corrected Donnie yesterday before everybody. I was going to send it to him. <coughs> A correction by email. <coughs> but a bunch of people that don't like to give thumb that up. <coughs> Very bad <clears throat> that it was a kind acts amazing. You read if you take the love chapter, well I've hit hit this thing love it. <clears throat> you read the love chapter and teach it says love is kind. You know what kind means? They're not, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that you're hurting. I love you so much. You liar. Kind is beneficial. I was called to a nursing home once in Plano to see a woman dying of cancer. And the nursing home wanted me to visit her till she died. <clears throat> oh, my God. <clears throat> We're going a different direction now. Uh, and I said to the nurse, look, I don't hold people's hands till they die. I pray and they get well. God heals them. And there's faith in their heart. She said, you don't need to ever come back here. I said, thank you, man. In 1984, 
as a young woman attended my water black Christian training school. And I was praying in the fellowship hall a lot. And I heard her say to somebody next to her, she'd been sitting with a man for two or three days that God was going to raise him from the dead. And I said, what'd you say? You see, you're not going to get by with the seat around me. I said, what did you say? I said, she told me, God's going to raise this man from the dead. And we've been set, sitting with him for three days. I said, where's he at now? Oh, they buried him. But God's still going to raise him from the dead. <clears throat> I do. I had a devil on my hands. A devil. A devil. I know devils. And I got some devils pursuing me now. Nothing but devils. Thank God. I said, young lady, you're deceived. God is not going to raise that man out of the grave. No, he will not. Well, he did Lazarus. Well, you're not Jesus. Arrogant spirit. Real arrogant. I got them especially in Missouri after me. Arrogant. Super arrogant. I said, you can stop going back to that graveyard. It wasn't but about three or four months. She came to me and she said, I've got severe pain in my back. I said, yes, right. How long you had it? Oh, two or three months. But God's going to heal it. I said, he is? Oh, yeah. You know what it is? No, but God will heal it. I watched that girl, that woman, arrogant, deceived. Missouri's got one. Full of deceit, pursuing me, persecuting me. I know this devil. Religious devil. So, I finally said to this girl, you need to go to a position. You need to have a position check you. I'm talking about an MD. I was emphatic. I know about osteopathy. I love them. I know them. 
They're some of them real good. I know some MDs not worth a quarter. You see, in the Navy, I was a hospital corpsman. Dispensary services, Yokosuka, Japan, for 27 months. And every other night, I worked with three physicians on, in emergency services. And every other weekend, I saw all kinds in operation. Not many of them could do it. Anything. So I demanded, you know, I have to give account before God for those people that come to my ministry. Go to a position. Now, she came back. The day, I think it was. New Year's Eve with x-rays, cancer, cancer of the bone. I've dealt with cancer of the bone in animals. Amen. So, the next morning, I was leaving for Zimbabwe. And I prayed with her. So, I get back from Zimbabwe 15 days later. And I uh, talked to her, prayed for her. She's under physician care. But her parents condemned me. Where is this preacher that has church every night? and won't come visit the sick. I heard that. I said, okay, Lord. She lived in Richardson. I went to her house Monday through Friday, week one. Week two, week three. The last day I was there, the Lord said something to me that is a spirit in that woman speaking to you in life. It's a devil saying, I'm going to be healed. And I said to her, you lie, devil. You have no faith. If you had faith in that heart, but mixed with my faith, you'd be well. She died that night. God wouldn't let her die till I confronted that spirit in that woman lying. When I first came to Plano, there was a Baptist music director. And he had 
I'm not sure what, cancer maybe. But some religious people wanted me to go see him. And I went. And this devil in this Baptist song leader, they call it worship, but it's not. would set in his bed, God's going to heal me, God's going to heal me, God's going to heal me, when God heals me, I'm going to sing for the Lord. Never. I never went back. I knew it was a devil. Look, folks, you can't fool the Spirit of God. Do you know that? This woman in Missouri, that's a devil in her mouth, in her family's mouth. Nothing but a devil. Thank God. Hallelujah. The devil is a deceiver. Deceives the whole world. Thank God. Hallelujah. What time? 11.42. Well, I thank God for Donnie Cosmore. I'll tell you that. For the man's principled and he's a, a large giver to water black ministry. And that's been for years. Years. But I want to tell you something. Ones that God loves, Hebrews 12, he corrects, chastises. Yeah, all of them. Everyone. And God and me not send an email to Donnie, but do it publicly yesterday, right here. Why? Because he knew a bunch of you liked that alms wasn't money, but kind act. Now, I understand, but that's what that said. It overlooked money. And my friends, God will correct anyone he loves. And if you receive correction, you'll be a son or a daughter. If you won't receive correction, you'll be a bastard. Thank God, Donnie and Jacqueline have received correction. And I'm told, took that post off, which it should have been taken off. Donnie told me yesterday, when he put it up, he didn't think it was right in the spirit, but he wasn't sure. That's Donnie Cawthorn. And you that said, preach it, brother, you know what spirit you are. Donnie apologized on Facebook just a while ago. He did? Yes. Paul, do you have it? I can pull it up. Thank God. Thank God. It's right here. <clears throat> Read it. It says, I want to address the post which I put up about Acts 10. 
I did not intend to convey the alms did not include money. Neither myself or Jacqueline want to deceive anyone regarding this. We are asking all to forgive us. Well, thank God. You are forgiven. Amen. For sure. Amen. Let me tell you something, folks. It's the love of God to correct you. The love of God. The devil just deceived Dolly and Jack. He's a great deceiver. I've been deceived. Don't kid yourself. It's not fun to find out Satan has deceived you. But that bunch in Missouri deceived by the devil, and they're so full of pride, they can't accept that. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for Donnie and Jacqueline's humility. And let me tell you, they've been a good example to all of you that are barking at me and telling me all about what I do with money. I don't even care what you say. Not at all. But I'll tell you, Denny Hurley, I gave you money to pay a lawyer. The best lawyer in southwest Missouri according to the people that are in the know up there. And I happen to know what you told me. He told you that I will not repeat it. But I would, if I were you, I'd repent of my pride. No other name under heaven whereby one must be saved but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Faith in that name. Faith in that name. Thank God. Faith in that name. Thank God. You can be born again. Join one with the Lord. Deliver. Save. Receive Christ. Amen. And you are. Repeat the name of Jesus. You've got the faith in your heart. Repeat the name of Jesus with me. After me, Jesus, Jesus, God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Eight zero eight two, or write Doyle Davidson Post Office Box eight six one three two seven Plano Texas seven five zero eight six. That's Doyle Davidson Post Office Box eight six one three two seven Plano Texas seven five zero eight six. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.